But also during the opening, you see that Chibs and Juice are enjoying the show at, at, at Cara Cara. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and I had the opportunity to go back and watch this. And um, <laughs> wow, very uncomfortable. You, you want to take us play by play through this no, one, Ken? I, I, I want to stay at the 10,000 foot view because I think it's more appropriate. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Welcome back. If you are just joining us, you are watching part two of tonight's three-part show. We've already finished part one, where we both did a tasting of Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And Ken, if you missed part one, you should click somewhere around here and go back and start with part one. because yes, somewhere. somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around <laughs> there. Uh, but go back and start with part one, because you definitely want to enjoy a little Buffalo Trace before moving into parts two and three of tonight's show. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. This is great stuff. I, I really like the flavor profile. It was worth the wait. Maybe not. Maybe it wasn't worth the wait. I, I'm impatient, but I, I'm going to enjoy this a little bit more. So here's my question for you, because you had to, and again, we won't go into details. We'll just say you had to jump through multiple hoops to procure a bottle of what should be widely available Buffalo Trace. Correct. There's there's definitely an, an underground railroad involved. So <laughs> my question is, do you now wish you would have bought more than one? Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm getting ready to place an order for another one because this one's about half empty now. So I think that's probably, you know, there's a lot of other reviewers that would give it, a, you know, a rating on a scale of one to ten or a one to five. I think our rating should be is... What links will Ken go to to get a second bottle? That's a great barometer. I mean, <laughs> this this one will de definitely be up there for me. I, I don't want to say a five, but you know we're up in the high fours. I'm gonna I'm gonna get another bottle because I need it for the shelf. I need it. For Which an means you need to get two for, bottles for a rainy day. Maybe even two, so I can drink one, one and to still drink, have another one to save. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. And if this and if it happens to show up in the state of PA, it, it makes it all that much easier. I'll keep my eye open for it, but. Right now, things are tough. And, and frankly, at 25 bucks a bottle, having a few wouldn't be a bad idea. No, that's All right. cheap. That's cheap. Yep. All right, so before we jump into tonight's episode of Sons, I want to quickly remind everyone, do please like and subscribe. Click that little bell at the top of your page so you don't miss a single episode. Um, and then be sure to leave us your questions, your comments. Uh, you can do that in the comment section below. Or you can email your questions to us at ask at bourbon bros. That's B-R-O-S dot TV. And if your question doesn't suck, we may even answer it on a future show. All right, Ken, let's get into tonight's discussion of Sons of Anarchy Season 2, Episode 3, titled Fix. Let's do uh, it. I, I watched it again last night just because I was entertained by this one. I don't know about you, but... Yeah, it's a good one. I mean, IMDb score of 8.2. Um, it's a strong episode. Now, this one was released, Ken, back in September 22nd, 2009. I feel old. Uh, it was written by Dave Erickson, and I agree with you. Very entertaining episode. Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> the last episode, remind me what that was. That was... Uh... It's small basically tier. the small aftermath terrors, right? of Gemma's rape. Yeah, right. It was small the first, last one was small terrors. This that was also rated an eight 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 point two. If I wasn't mistaken, it was. I think for a totally different reason, though. Yeah, it's, it has to be totally different because this one was more a little lighter. It was, was there's more comedy involved. I was just entertained more. It wasn't as heavy. Maybe maybe that's it. Yeah, and I, and I have to imagine this was intentional um, by Kurt Sutter. The first two episodes were pretty heavy. They were great, but very dramatic. And about the time where you're really feeling the weight of these first two episodes, we get episode three and they bring the funny. Yeah. No, it was good. All right. So let's go through a quick synopsis for anybody that might be living under a rock and, and hasn't actually watched this episode yet. Uh, Jackson Tara's romantic day off is interrupted by a phone call from Luann and a field trip to a porn studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clay and Gemma also decide they want to visit the porn studio and things do not go well for them. 
Yeah. Um, there's broken glass. We'll get into it. Uh, Bobby figures out that Luann has been skimming on payments to the club for years. And that prompts Luann to come up with a plan to, we'll just say, make things right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ima, one of Luann's starlets, decides she wants Jax and tries to push Tara out. And we'll talk about what happens with that. Um, Opie and Half Sack discover that the Nords are selling meth and charming and extract a location from the local dealer. And when Hale fails the test set by Clay, he turns a blind eye to the meth lab. Sam Crow decides to take matters into their own hands. Mm -hmm. So, Ken, I know you already shared your overall thoughts of the episode. You liked it. I liked it. Um, let's start digging in. Did we have any new characters introduced in this episode? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that we have new characters, but the one that jumped out at me was Ima. She, as you mentioned her, um, she is an actress at the Cara Cara. Yes, and, uh, it was technically introduced she in was. the last episode, in the last right? Episode, but we but, failed to mention it. Right, but she, she served a lesser role. Like, she wasn't as prominent in the storyline then as she is now. Yes, right? and... And, and what is Imus full name, Ken? I, I don't I don't know that I remember that. What, what's the last last name? <laughs> I call bullshit. <laughs> well, help me understand. Help me understand. Help you me know understand. it. You just won't say it. Just help All me right. understand. So Ima has a porn name. And her like porn name is Like Cinnamon? I Cinnamon? I'm a tight. That oh. is her full name. Very creative. Very creative. Okay. I might have heard that before. So, yes. I'm just going to say Ima from now on. But, yes, Ima was technically introduced in the last episode. Um, and, and we both failed to capture the fact that she is a recurring character. So we'll catch up with that now. And what is the actress that plays Ima? Her name is Kristen Ranton. Chris, that's right, Kristen Renton. And she does a great job. She, she does, she does. And she's in a lot of other things that are more recent, but this was early on in her career. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm going to leave it there. We'll put a pen in it. But there's some interesting things to kind of break down with regards to this uh, Ima, Tara, and Jax storyline. Yes, there is, there is. All right, so... Just to kind of tee up the major storylines for this episode, our, our kind of main storyline is um, Ethan Zobel pushes Darby and the Nord to sell drugs and charming. And mm -hmm. this is part of his continuing effort to push Clay and Sam Crow out of power and out of favor with the local residents of charming. Mm -hmm. We've got Bobby Elvis, who is going through Luann's books and discovers that she has two sets of books and is skimming off the top of Kara Kara. Right. We have Gemma who continues to kind of quietly suffer from the PTSD resulting from the rape in episode one of mm -hmm. season two. And then um, kind of tied to storyline A, we have the club that is determined to find and destroy the Nord Smith lab. Right. Anything good, you think I missed there? No, that, that's a great summary. All right. Well, let's just dive right in. Um, I'll let you kick things off. Give me kind of one of your favorite moments you want to start with. Well, as always, I mean, we're going to get this, I think, moving forward here. We're going to get this opening and closing. And, and, uh, and, and yep. I'll, I'll associate that with what I recall from... Uh, what Vanna White? What's the name of that? That uh, uh, oh, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune. You know how um, they've kind of changed to where they always give you the R S T L N E, and then you pick yes. other character, other other uh, you know characters there. This is a lot. We're always going to get the cold open. We're always going to get the fade to black. Would you agree so with we, that? We we probably should have mentioned this in season two, episode one. That would have been more timely. But let's do it now. What you're basically saying is from here on out. We're likely going to start with the cold open and finish with the fade to black. I think so. I think we should just get that out there now because otherwise we're going to sound like it's original and it's not. <laughs> Fair enough. And okay. generally we try to pick 
kind of you pick five and I pick five for a total of 10. What we're really saying is we're always going to start with cold open. We're probably always going to end with fade to black. So there's basically four others for you and four others for me. There's eight more in between. That, yeah. That will. All right. That's that, yeah. That's fair. I mean, that's my observation. I mean, that's the here. way it's been working out. Yeah. Frankly. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. That's my observation here. I think you're spot on. So, all right. So with that in mind, Ken, mm -hmm. kick us off with the cold open. Uh, I think well, it's always a good episode. You know, it's always going to be episode when you get Bobby Elvis opening. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. This this is kind of the way they announce there's going to be some funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's well put. Um, he opens. He's at, he's at a bar, bar mitzvah. And he's, which he's which doing, is even better. He's doing his thing. He's, he's the side hustle for him. Yeah. This isn't Vegas. This is some little private party. Yeah, someone's paid him to impersonate Elvis, and he does a great job, as always. Gives um, it his all. <laughs> but, you know, in a, in a cold open, he, he a, after the bar mitzvah, he's not quite a happy guy. And, and Clay notices. Clay notices that he's yep. a, he's sad Elvis, so to speak. Yes. Right? Yep. Um, Clay works out that gives him a different assignment, right? Yeah, he, so... Just to kind of frame this up, so Bobby is working bar mitzvahs and pretty much anything he can find because while he was locked up mm -hmm. for the murder, he wasn't earning. Sure. And he has alimony and child support and bills, and so he's trying to catch up. Right. He's trying and to so earn. Clay, Clay throws him a bone. Yeah, he throws him a bone. He's healing because he got wounded in the last episode. His shoulders. That's right. He up. got shot. Like it's been a tough road for Bobby yeah. in the last few weeks. He needs a, a posh role. Like he needs something that's simple, something he can really just lay low and kind of get into. And this is Clay. Clay gives him a, this this task to be the bookkeeper at Kara Kara. Yeah. The, if 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 Bobby was a cop, this would be him getting a desk job. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> totally. <laughs> So in that opening scene again, the cold open, Je Gemma, um, it, the, you see that uh, Clay wakes up, notices that Gemma's not there. She's uh, she's kind of, uh, you know, in the kitchen, kind of chopping flowers, and, and she's to put in an arrangement, but she's not really just chopping them lightly. She has taken out her aggression on those those flowers. Very aggressive, kid. <laughs> Very aggressive. Yeah, it. You don't want any fingers. Near no. the stems of those flowers. Absolutely not. But also during the opening, you see that Chibs and Juice are enjoying the show at, Ch at, at Cara Cara. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and I had the opportunity to go back and watch this. And <laughs> um, wow, very uncomfortable. Y you want to take us play by play through this <laughs> no, one, Ken? <laughs> I, I, I want to stay at the 10,000 foot view because I think it's more appropriate. Good call. Good call. <laughs> but there's a, there's a scene there where, um, is it Ima? Is it Ima in it? No, no, no it's, not. it's not. Who is that? Uh, oh, is it Layla? It's Layla. It's Layla in it. But they are, um, I don't know, taking advantage of a poor soul. And as I recall, she drinks the tequila or whatever beverage they're, they're, they're drinking. And they use the bottle and they insert it somewhere that is very inappropriate. Yes. Well, I think that gives enough for people to <laughs> that's connect the dots. And, that's enough color commentary, isn't it? Yeah. We, we don't have to go into more than that. But let's just say um, if we were watching the movie Fletch. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It would have been Moon River. <laughs> Fletch. You're going way back in the vault with that one. Wow. I had forgotten that even existed. But, now. What was interesting about this cold open, Ken, and you're right, the cold opens, have, we've talked about them for weeks now. Mm -hmm. they're, they're such a big part of how the show starts. This one was 35 seconds. Well, usually they're like, they can be like five to seven minutes sometimes. I know it. I was surprised at how short it was. And you get all of that in 35 seconds. Wow. I didn't even clock it. Maybe I should bring out my stopwatch next time, but <laughs> I didn't. Well, but. you mentioned Jim and the flowers. Let, let's just roll right into uh, Jim's PTSD. Sure. I, so, I'm going to have a little, little more Buffalo Trace to wrap up. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Pour okay. away. Right. Uh, so as you said, Clay wakes up. Jim is not in bed. Um, and later it cuts to them at the table, right? They're, they're having coffee. 
and you can and the tough part of this scene is clay does not know what Gemma has gone through right yeah i mean the, the whole yeah the whole the whole episode he does not know that's right so as far as clay's concerned she was in a car accident yeah and yeah, yeah the car got beat up and she had to go to the hospital but she's okay now yeah get over it and, that's huh? right and so he has a rather kind of flippant attitude to it because it's quote unquote just a minor car accident yeah and yet Jim is dealing with all of this trauma of what's actually happened she's not shared any of that with clay and so this just sets up a major drama between the two of them because a car accident should not lead to a fear of intimacy no. which is exactly what's happening. And so for Clay, it's just this big question mark of what the hell is going on. Right. And Jim is not sharing anything. Mm -mm. Yeah. And, and, and I had the, 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 I was able to, to watch the episode after this, which we'll talk about later, but this is something that builds. And yes. yeah, he's totally clueless. He's, he's in the right here because had, he might have a completely different attitude if he really knew what was happening. Oh, I'm sure he would. Absolutely. Um, and, and you see this play out throughout the episode. And, and let's just say at this point, things don't get better. No. Would you agree with that? Yeah. They don't. Um, I, I actually liked a couple of moments. Again, the injection of humor when, when Gemma basically leaves because she doesn't want to have the conversation. Right. And all that's left is Clay and Gemma's bird. I'm trying to talk to you here. Since when do you want to talk? <laughs> he throws something at the bird because he's just so disgusted. Um, you've got Unser later at the garage who is so gentle and kind because he knows and he's trying to help Gemma. And you can just see Gemma, like, her instinct is to put up a wall and act like nothing's wrong. Right. And then the moment you see her put up that wall, Tig walks in and just scares the shit out of her. Oh, shit. You okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Here's the uh, repo list. Why don't you get half second Oak started on it? Yeah, sure. Which is just a great way of communicating to the audience. She's not okay. Right. right? She's not. And then the kind of argument and fight between Clay and Gemma that started at home now continues at Teller Motors. Yep. And... My favorite part of all of this is when, you know, Gemma takes off and heads to Kara Kara and Clay's pissed off and kind of storms off. It cuts to Tig and Tig just says, I hate it when mommy and daddy fight. I remember that. I do remember that. And then things go to the porn studio and really go off the rails. Ugh, wow. And wow. you can see in this scene, like you have... You know, Clay and Gemma are there, Tara's there, then eventually Jax comes out, and all of this is unfolding, and you just see how, like, everybody can kind of sense that this isn't right. Like, this is not normal, right? You see it in Jax's eyes, you see it in, it, Tara knows, yeah, she so knows. she understands. She but knows. for she's Jax the, and Clay, she's the, it's... She's one of the only ones that does really know what's going on. Yeah. And so you can feel Tara and her her pain of knowing what Gemma's going through but then you've got Clay and Jackson and they're going like what is going on right they took that cinder block and threw it through that uh, <laughs> the window of the yeah, uh, yeah Clay's had it yeah, he's done yeah he, <laughs> he totally destroyed his own window <laughs> like he's just gonna have to pay to fix it. <laughs> That's great. And 
And then he goes to touch her. And of course, Gemma freaks out because, right, that whole sense of being touched and intimacy. And that's where it's like, it seems yeah. like an overreaction. Right. It's definitely on public display there. And uh, yeah, it didn't. It went from bad to worse. And this is one of the things, you know, we talked about how Tig's character is so layered and there are things that he does that endears you to him. And there are things that he does that just make you say, what a freak. And there are things <laughs> that he does where you just go, I'm, I'm not on board with that. Like he's just sociopathic. But in this episode, he's the one that is telling Clay, go talk to her, fix this, yeah. hatch things up. He did. Um, Such a great it, character. It, I love, I love his uh, character. It's so good. It's so good. So yeah, I, I loved that as kind of a a thread that was woven through this entire episode and it, again it's all tied to that first episode which is so incredibly hard to watch and and episode two was really the aftermath of that and and still brought the heavy this is certainly not light but we're seeing the evolution of what has happened from episode one. It's not over yet, but you can really feel a sense that Jim is not going to be able to hide this. No. She's cracking at the seams and people are starting to figure out there's more to the story. Right. Right. Which brings us back to Zoe Bell. So Ken, what do you got for us next? Yeah, so Bell, like, so he's rolling into town. He's opening his cigar shop, which is really just a front for his white power. Yeah, I'm gonna sell drugs and charming and take over charming, right? Yep. Well, he approaches Hale in this episode and kind of lays out a plan to kind of bury Sam Crow. So he he proposes allowing, and Hale Hale is always been above board. He, he's he's by the book. By the book. Doesn't really like the relationship that Unser has with the club. But he wants, he's talking to Zobel. Zobel throws out, hey, how about we're going to, we want to sell drugs in Charming. Temporarily. Temporarily, right. He said, are you talking about deliberately bringing drugs into my town? I'm talking about creating a temporary problem that allows you to flush out the permanent one. So he wants Hale, essentially, or the law, to allow them to flood Charming with drugs. And yes. it, it's always been something that isn't allowed or that those in Charming that know about Sam Crow have always just accepted because they know that one thing that Sam Crow is all about is not allowing drugs in Charming. That's so right. this kind of goes against the grain there, and that's what so Bell wants to capitalize on. That's right. Because if you're, if Sam Crow is no longer providing the benefits that they're used to, then, then they fall. We in, don't need you here. Right. They fall in the public eye at that point. That's right. And, and so Bell knows that and is exploiting that or trying to. So, so Hale, like he doesn't really, doesn't really agree with it completely, but he kind of accepts it. Yeah. And my big takeaway from this is, this to me shows you why Ethan Zobel has been successful. You see his persuasiveness. He has taken someone that is straight laced by the book and has gotten him to entertain the idea of allowing them to sell meth in Charming for the benefit of a greater good. Yeah, well, wow. I mean, and he falls yes. for it. He, he allows it like they're going to open a full on lab breaking bad style in charming. That's right. So, and he's going to turn a blind eye. Hail. He, he, he's supposed to. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. We'll talk about that later, but this is what is being proposed. And, and that was a, a kind of a key plot builder for this episode, in my opinion. So let's stay with that. And we'll go into, there's kind of two parts of this. There's what I call crack is back. Yeah, and and then the one that you mentioned that I love is Got Milk. Oh yeah, which yeah. I'll let you the, I'll the, let you share that one. Okay, let me know when I go in on that one. All right, 
So the crack is back is really what you were just saying, which is Zobel is bringing crack and meth back into Charming and they're selling directly in Charming through the Nords and Opie and Half Sack are doing repos for Teller Motors. And in the course of these repos, they see a drug deal going down. That's right. They're, they're, they're there to help repossess cars and things, right? Right. And they're there, and Opie sees it off in the distance that there's someone selling drugs in the corner over there. And and he knows it's the Nords, and he knows that is a violation. That definite violation. And he's ready to throw down, because that's kind of Opie's mental state at this point. Right. He and seeks confrontation at this he does. point. He does. Seeks he seeks it out. Um, so he immediately, go, you know, he and Afsat go back. They put their cuts on, and they're ready to to stop what is going on and the drug dealer not intimidated fellas got a need need for you to take your shit somewhere else no one deals in charming why no one a lot of reinforcement but half half sacks like hold up I'm not because Opie doesn't care, right? He he's care. like, he's one against many and does not care, right? And so, what does Half Sack do? Well, he stops me. He says, "I'm great with a crowbar, but I'm not very good at deflecting bullets." <laughs> <laughs> so he pulls him aside, and, and, and Opie agrees. They got to get some reinforcement here, and they kind of pause it at that point. Yeah, and you see, kind of Opie's reaction is like, I guess that's a valid point. And it kind of reluctantly turns around and leaves. Yeah. Yeah. So they do call for reinforcements, which includes Juice, Chibs, and Tig. Yes, it does. And Juice does a great job as posing as a tweaker. Got a need, brother? Yeah, you got a... What do you mean? Hey, yo, relax. Relax. And my foreman sees me. I'm screwed, man. Hey, go on, over here, over here. This ain't that, uh, this ain't that Mexican shit, right? I'm all about made in America. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's there. So he pulls the him dealer, aside. The dealer finally is intimidated. Finally is intimidated. And he, he gives up the location of the crack house at that point, right? That's right. That's now, right. So the, speaking of the, of the crack house, there was a scene where and it was very short. Got milk? Got milk. That's where we're going. <laughs> Go for it. I mean, I don't know if anyone really noticed that. But I didn't until you brought it up. I had not <laughs> noticed it. So you didn't, take really? it, Ken. Got milk. Well, um, Darby walks out of this this meth lab and you don't see what's going on inside. You never see what's going on inside, but he walks out of the house, he's got a respirator on, he pulls it off, and right. he walks you out. You can clearly and, tell what's going on, yeah, even you, though you, you don't see what's going on. Yeah, you know there's no innocence here. But He's got a beverage in his hand. It's a, it's milk. It's like, I don't know a percent, but it's like milk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's vitamin D or if it's 2%. It doesn't matter. It's white. <laughs> okay? And it, he just takes a swig of it. So even his beverages are biased, right? They're, they're <laughs> wow. <laughs> which takes us back to season two, episode one, which was titled what? Re- refresh my memory. It's uh, it's it's albification. Albification, right? Which that's right. It's the definition white. of albification is is white, turning things white. turning things white. So that what a perfect beverage of choice. I don't know, aside from horchata or anything else that might might be white, but I had I did not pick up on it. You did. I have to assume this was not coincidence. No, this was written in. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and so that brings us to the final point of kind of the front half of the episode. Right. Which, um, Ken, I'll let you take this one too. Jump in. Take well, us on. The club business. There's always a moment where there's club business going on, right? Absolutely. Generally around church. Yes, yeah, generally around church. But there's a meeting in the warehouse when Juice and Jax tell Clay about Ethan's past. Do you remember this? Yeah, and this is where, again, I think Jax is the one that really brings the insightful data. Right. Well, 
they, they break they break down the fact that Bobby's been assigned to Kara Kara and he's going to be the one doing the books there. And, and Tig looked visually upset that he got that gig. <laughs> if there's anyone that wants to be at Kara Kara, it's Tig. Right. Right. That's the closest to a dream job for <laughs> Tig. Yes, it is. So Jax has to, if I recall, Jax has to, to escort Ima. Is that when he does that or? Yeah. That so because he, because Sam Crow's in partnership with Luann, Luann has basically said that I'm is one of their like top stars. Yeah. She's a top starlets and they have to keep, keep her happy. And, and remember from episode two, they had Georgie, Georgie. trying to muscle mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And so this is kind of the continuation of that. And so this is Jax providing protection for Ima so that Georgie and his crew don't try to rough her up the way they did um, Lila. Is that who it was? Yeah. Yeah. Lila. Exactly. Lila. So, yeah, she's I'm a tight. I'm a tight. So that's that's her name. She's very concerned with, with what Georgie did to, to Lila. So she wants yes. to make sure that at her at her call that she will be escorted from Kara Kara home safely to tell her motors and. In all of this, quite frankly, it's pretty obvious. It's a ruse for her to get close and spend time. Oh with yeah, Jax. it's obvious. There, there's a party brewing. Like she wants to take Jax to the party, and and um, yeah, it's she's it, making her move. She's making her move. You can feel it. Yeah. So Jax heads over to Kara Kara and and first spends a little bit of time with Bobby. Right. Right. And and Bobby. Bobby lets lets him know what's going on there, right? Yeah, he again. Bobby's always that one that's kind of checking in. How are you doing? And kind of being that consulary between Clay and the rest of the club. And he's worried about yeah, this tension totally. that's he, brewing between Jax and Clay. And he's done that before, but there, he's very concerned. He, he lays it out. And he says that look, you know, everyone's seeing what's going on between you and Clay. And yep. this is another this is another topic, a storyline that kind of continues, and it's I don't know, it's dragging me down anyway. It's it's getting a little bit old, but just the tension, the fighting between Clay and Jax, that it, it's not going away. It's here to, it's here for a while. No, what I what what I do like about this scene, if we remember back to the way that season one ended, is the reason you have all of this tension is because Jax knows that Clay. Is responsible. Tried to have Opie yeah. hit. He knows. Right? He and knows. he's responsible for Donna's death. Yep. But but no one else, right, in terms of what Jax knows, no one else other than Piney knows that. Right. Right? So he is naturally downplaying the issues to Bobby. But remember, Bobby knows. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bobby doesn't know that Jax knows. And Jax doesn't know that Bobby knows, but both of them know. Yeah, good point. Good point. Which I find fascinating, right? right. So, so, so Bobby has a cigarette, an unlit cigarette in his mouth, and Jax comes in and sits down, and Jack pulls out a joint, right? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I mean, I don't know that I would, but he did. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, he's sitting there, and, um, you know, Bobby's telling him, hey, we're concerned. The club's concerned. I mean, they share they share that joint. Now, Bobby suddenly the cigarette doesn't matter. The cigarette's gone, but it. I was like, I was watching. That. I don't know about you, but I was watching that going. That's an unlit cigarette. It's in his mouth. Like, what's going to happen with it? Are you going to light it? What are you going to do with that? I, my my. I was ultim- I was very focused on that cigarette, John. You more than I apparently because I don't <laughs> remember. I was very focused on that. But what does Jax ultimately tell Bobby? I don't know. Help me out. Father and son shit. It's all good. Right. Well, he deflects. That's a concern. That's a concern that is it, that Bobby expresses multiple times is that I don't want to get too far into the next episode, but you got to get right with your, your father son stuff that's going on. Yep. Here. Yep. All right, and that's going to do it for part two. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out our channel for more shows and then Be sure to join us for part three, where we're going to continue enjoying some Buffalo Trace, 
I know Ken will continue enjoying some Buffalo Trace. I will. I will. And we're going to wrap up our discussion of Sons of Anarchy Season 2, Episode 3, titled Fix. Stay with us.